Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Biological weapons aren't something new by any means. If you think about it, it's the most basic way to fight against an opponent. Go after what's keeping them alive by attacking their life force. Not just poking and prodding, but by making sure something gets into their system that will actively attack their organs, respiratory systems, all the things that keep life going. The ways we've done this have varied in the past, but you might be surprised to know that it's not actually that hard to do this today, as the agreement made between nations in the 1925 protocol has no actual method for verifying compliance. Let's take a look at some of the atrocities people have tried in the past in this list of the top 10 biological weapons used in history. But before we get started, why not become an archivist today by clicking that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. If you end up enjoying this video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and tell us in the comments section where you would draw the line when it comes to weapons, biological or other types used in war. Number 10. BC Biological Weapons You don't need a lab to create biological weapons. Back as far as 400 BC, warriors would create them right on the battlefield, dipping arrows into decomposing bodies or in blood mixed with manure. Other methods include placing dead animals in water sources and firing vessels full of poisonous snakes into enemy ships, like in the Battle of Eurymedon. Kind of like snakes on a plane, but as a weapon, and way back in 190 BC. It's not the same without Samuel L. Jackson, I'd assume, but we'd have to ask critics of the oral tradition that allowed that story to survive. Number 9. 1155 Poisoning Humans with Humans Back in the 12th century AD, Barbarossa used bodies of dead and decomposing soldiers to poison wells. He wasn't the only one to do this, of course. In the 14th century, Tartar forces would throw the plagued corpses into the city to cause epidemics within the city limits. It happened again in 1710, when Russia catapulted bodies of people who had died from plague at the Swedish forces in Estonia. Wow, can you imagine waiting for arrows, cannons, whatever, and just getting bodies or pieces of bodies thrown at you? Chills. Number 8. Body Catapulting in the Siege of Kaffa Historians say that in 1343, it was the plague that led to the Mongolians using bodies as weapons to catapult over to their enemies in Kaffa, which is now in modern Ukraine. With war and plague going on at the same time, it only made sense to bring them together in terrifying harmony. According to a historical review, what seemed like mountains of dead were thrown into the city, and Christians could not hide or flee or escape from them. Although they dumped as many of the bodies as they could into the sea, and soon the rotting corpses tainted the air and poisoned the water supply, and the stench was so overwhelming that hardly one in several thousands were in a position to flee the remains of the Tartar army. Moreover, one infected man could carry the poison to others and infect people and places with the disease by look alone. No one knew or could discover a means of defense. Would not want to trade places with the guys on the receiving end of that. Number seven, leper wine, anybody? Poisoning the water source is one thing, but I mean, Look at Flint, Michigan. We're not far from that today. However, when you get into the wine supply, that is truly offensive. In 1495, the Spanish took full advantage of the French enemy's love of wine, and they sprinkled in subtle notes of blood from leprosy patients. Not only did they serve it to their enemies, they actually made them pay for it. Buying leper blood wine has to be one of the worst purchases of your life. Number 6. Rabid Saliva Fast forward to 1650, and the Polish updated the old bioweapon trick just a little bit more. Instead of firing bodily fluids from their own soldiers at their enemies, they would take saliva from rabid dogs and follow the same procedure. 
That sure would make it hard to find hair of the dog that bit you when A. You weren't bit, and 2. You never even saw the dog. It's all baloney anyways, especially back in 1650. Once infected with the rabid saliva, you're pretty much a goner. Number 5. Napoleon floods Italy to spread malaria. Again, water comes into play. This time, we're not putting dead bodies in the water so people get one drink and die. This time, it's 1797 and Napoleon is flooding the plains around Mantua, Italy. Why? It's much more complex. He got more sophisticated with his biological weapons. He wanted to nurture the environment in which malaria thrives to enhance the spread of the disease. That's both smart and super evil. Number 4. World War I German Bioweapons We've heard of anthrax. I feel like this is what most of us associate with biological warfare. During World War I, Germans developed anthrax, glanders, cholera, and wheat fungus for this specific purpose. It's said that they spread plague in St. Petersburg, infected mules in Mesopotamia, and tried to do the same with the horses of the French cavalry. They were just trying it all over the place. Luckily, this didn't result in a massive outbreak of any of these diseases, but man, they were really playing with fire. Number 3. World War II Japanese Bioweapons During the Second World War, it was Japan that was operating bioweapon research in Manchuria. They were done on prisoners, as we've seen time and time again on our scientific experiments done on humans, and involved plague, anthrax, syphilis, and other agents. You know, just to see what would happen. Victims sometimes were even executed or died as a result of the infections. After death, the research wasn't over. Autopsies were done to understand just how much they had affected those innocent people. Number 2. Big Oops This accidental bioweapon attack was actually the release of anthrax from a weapons facility in Sviatoslavsk, USSR in 1979. It killed at least 66 people which, had it been another country who had released the agent, would definitely have been named a terrorist attack. However, as it happens with Russia, the government didn't even admit it was them until 1992. They said the people had died due to the ingestion of infected meat. Until, that is, President Boris Yeltsin came out saying that it had all just been a big government oops. Number 1. Viet Cong during the Vietnam War, bioterrorism was definitely not out of the scope of possibilities. The Viet Cong guerrillas would use sharp punji sticks, sharp bamboo stakes hidden among tall grass or in deep mud, and covered them in feces so that when they pierced soldiers, they caused serious infection. It seems so innocuous, just getting pricked by bamboo, but in reality, Anything that pierces the skin that allows harmful bacteria into your bloodstream could wipe you out very quickly. Enemy soldiers of the Viet Cong certainly expected bullets and other warfare, but might have been surprised to see that they had some biological weapons up their sleeve. Thanks for watching. Whew, I'm off to clean out my fridge. There's some leftovers in there that I'm sure have turned hazardous. But before I go, do me and yourself a favor. Subscribe, click the bell, and give this video a like. Then scroll on down to the comments and let us know which of the types of biological warfare you thought was most disturbing on this list. And let us know what potentially dangerous biohazards, uh, leftovers, are growing in your fridge. Although I have to admit, some of my own cooking is pretty hazardous to anyone's health. Just saying.